Welcome to our review on corrosion. So first thing we need to understand is when we will get corrosion occurring. And what we find is corrosion is going to happen when metals react with air or water. So if we think about iron, which is a special case if you like, then we will find that when iron reacts with oxygen and water, we're carrying out the process of rusting. Now, go careful here. Don't use the phrase rusting to describe corrosion of any metal other than iron because it's incorrect. So what we actually find is that as oxygen is added to the iron, we're carrying out this oxidation reaction to make this hydrated iron oxide. And that's what rust is, it's iron oxide. Hence why we can't say aluminium rusts because it's not iron oxide it's making. So what we end up with for our word equation for rusting then is iron plus oxygen plus water makes our hydrated iron oxide. And what we'll find is there are certain conditions that will increase the rate at which this rusting takes place. The first thing is if we've got acid present, so acid rain for example, and the second one is if there's salt present, which is why people who live right by the seafront and park their cars there tend to see a faster rate of corrosion in their vehicle than people who don't live near the sea. So we've mentioned two important metals that we use for an awful lot of things, iron and aluminium. Now, one of the common questions that they like to ask you about is to compare the uses of different metals. So they'll give you a particular use, something like aircraft bodies, for example, and ask you using information in a table to explain which is the best to use and why, okay? So because we've got that explained, we've got to back it up. Now, because they're gonna give you information in a table, think about what properties does this material need for that use. So if we're thinking about an aircraft body, then we need it to be pretty lightweight. We're going to need it to not be very prone to corrosion. And things like obviously the fact that it conducts electricity well isn't actually that relevant in this case. So think about what properties apply and which ones don't and only talk about the ones that are relevant. So if we think about iron then, it's malleable, just like the aluminium is. They're both good electrical conductors, but then we come into their differences. So iron corrodes easily, and the reason behind that is that as we generate this iron oxide, then it flakes off. So as soon as that's flaked off, new iron is exposed to then react with the oxygen and the water once more. If we consider aluminium, however, this one doesn't corrode easily. And the reason behind that is aluminium will still react with the oxygen in the air to form aluminium oxide, but that aluminium oxide layer is tightly bound to the surface, which means that only the very top is going to react. The bits underneath are protected by that. If we look at the densities, then the phrase we want to use when talking about density is lightweight. Okay, don't just say light, say lightweight. So iron with a density of 7.8 grams per centimeter cubed, that one is not lightweight. Whereas if we compare it to aluminium with a density of 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed, aluminium is lightweight, which obviously makes it good when we're thinking about planes because we don't want things with a very high density in the materials we're using. Iron is magnetic, but aluminium is not magnetic. It's the final property we really need to think about. But as I say, look at the table that they give you, think about which of those properties are relevant and only talk about those in your answer.